Hello, welcome to the fantastic world of videography. Maybe your business is moving online now and maybe you are trying to catch up and learn about how to make some effective video content for your business. I'm here to help. I wanna to talk to you today about B-roll. B-roll is the artistic shots that are associated with videography, as opposed to A-roll, meaning the interviews or dialogue or, or narration, the, the, the meat and potatoes. The B-roll sits on top of the A-roll to creatively uh, express what the person's talking about in a perfect world. I have a document here I wanna show you about how you can shoot effective B-roll. Some of these lessons will apply for things like documentary filmmaking or short corporate videos, but some of these rules can be applied to much smaller projects as well. B-roll shots are our creative shots that we decorate our video with. Think of B-roll like colors of paint for a painter. If you only have three colors of paint, when you go to make your canvas, uh, or when you go to paint your canvas, you don't have many choices to, to go from. If you're a very talented painter, you can make those three colors go far, but if you're just starting out, maybe that might be limiting. It's nice to start with a full range of palette so we have the choice of what color we want to use for our project, which means that we need to come up with a lot of different types of B-roll to simulate the colors to give ourselves choices when we're actually editing. Creative B-roll is not achieved by filming everything from eye level. I've been about six feet tall for most of my life now. And so I've been looking at this world from this high off the ground essentially all the time. So to be creative, I don't think having the camera right here is the best solution. You, you need to think about where the camera can be that's not at that same level of eye line so that when the camera sees the same environment that you've been looking at your whole life, it looks a little bit different. That means you need to look at the world in bold ways, in ways that you've never looked at them before. You ever looked at a chandelier from directly underneath? Uh, have you ever looked at your, uh, your cutlery drawer from, from, from eye level as opposed to a, a bird's eye view? You ever lied down on the ground and took a look at a flower with your chest flat on the ground? These are the perspectives that you need to assume to be able to make your dynamic B-roll uh, exciting. There's a term called shoot for the edit that videographers know very well. It's the idea that when you shoot a piece of B-roll that you know how you're going to use it. Just because it's a nice composition or, or a nice framing doesn't necessarily mean it's the right piece. So as you are collecting B-roll for your content, know ahead of time where you're going to be using that piece of B-roll. B-roll can be shot in a variety of different ways depending on what you're looking to create. Uh, if you're making, say, a, a feature-length documentary, maybe you need a lot longer static shots uh, as you're waiting for the moment to be happening in front of your camera. Maybe you're doing something a bit more flashy. Maybe you're gonna do a, a 20 second uh, sizzle reel. Uh, well then your, your, your B-roll can have a lot of dynamic movements to them uh, as you are pushing your camera towards some point of interest or, or, or pulling it away as you're shooting for the edit that you know how you're gonna be uh, using those movements when you're actually uh, uh, editing it all together. Maybe you wanna be able to add maybe a little bit of an intentional camera shake to, to your B-roll as well. Maybe to give that, uh, that uneasy feeling to it or maybe you want to have your, your camera uh, lock solid as a static shot, meaning there's no camera movement at all. So there's lots of different ways to shoot B-roll. So knowing how you're going to use it afterwards is very important. Good B-roll shots are not stumbled upon. It, it doesn't happen when people are hitting record and then, okay, let's go walk around, look for some good B-roll. Oh, this looks like a good thing right here. Maybe I'll, I'll zoom in and then you know, focus. Um, that wastes a lot of space and Good B-roll shooters know what they're gonna be shooting before they actually hit the record button. You call that filming with intention. So like I'm gonna film that thing right there in front of me, so I'm gonna get my camera or even my smartphone and I'm gonna compose my shot beforehand, um, make sure maybe I need to move something and clean the frame up a little bit and then when I'm all ready and I have my composition, then I hit record. Each B-roll shot that you get as well is its own file as well. So if I need to get a shot of my laptop, I would hit record, I'd record that, and then I would hit stop. And if I need to get a shot of this camera, then I would hit record and then stop. I wouldn't combine them in the same shot. I'm gonna get a shot of my laptop, oh, and then now a shot of the camera. I'd break them up into pieces. That way, when you're counting your files, when you're editing, I can say, I have 50 shots, because you can count them as opposed to I have 10, but this one has three in there, this one has two, and it allows you to quantify your B-roll shots a, a bit better. 
When you're recording your B-roll, I would record each composition for maybe about six to 10 seconds at a time. This allows us to trim our video clips in the edit suite. So if I know I only need a, a two second shot of someone typing on a keyboard, I'm still gonna record six to 10 seconds of it instead of trying to hit that two seconds exactly. Because it doesn't matter if we record a little bit longer than what we need. When we edit, if your clip is this long, I'm gonna take off the beginning little bit of it, I'm gonna take off the end little bit of it and be left with just that middle part of, of the clip. And by recording for a six to 10 seconds long, allows us that buffer to, to cut, cut, and to have that juicy middle part in the, in the middle. Film things in pairs or triplets. This gives you an incredible amount of options in the edit suite. If you need to shoot video clips of people jumping on a trampoline, then don't just get one wide shot from the back of the room and say, got it, I got a great shot, people were smiling and everything, amazing, it's a great shot. T to make your edit stronger, you'll need that wide shot of the people jumping on the trampoline, and then I would hit stop, I'd walk in a little bit closer, maybe get a couple of medium shots of, of people jumping, I maybe get more of the facial reaction, um, and then maybe get a little bit closer, and then maybe I would get a super close up shot just of a single spring on the, the trampoline as the people jump on it, that you see it flex, and flex and flex. Um, maybe I'll even I'll go under the trampoline and, and film film up uh, so that when the people are jumping on the trampoline I can see it bow down. And that's all a part of assessing an environment of knowing where I should be standing. So amateur videographers might film people jumping on a trampoline from, uh, if this is the trampoline, to film them from, from here uh, and from here and from here, but put the same basic composition every time. Uh, you gotta think about a, a set of B-roll shots for each action that you were looking to, to record. Shoot more B-roll than what you think that you actually need. Uh, it gives you options. Th this is the largest text in this document for a reason, that when I see amateur videographers put videos together, I can tell they use every shred of B-roll that they got, that they didn't get options, which might mean they didn't shoot things in pairs or in triplets. So shoot more than what you think that you need. When, when I shoot video and, and cut it together, I wanna say I throw out more than 70% of, of what I shoot. Being mindful of my six to 10 seconds uh, a time length that I'm maybe only taking two seconds of that, so I'm factoring that in as well. So it's not like I'm throwing out 70% of the shots that I take, but I still record a lot of extra material that I know I might not use, but sometimes it saves me in the edit suite. Like, oh, I'm glad I had that close-up shot. Otherwise, I would have had to stay on this wide shot for four seconds. And, and that can be a feel like an eternity when you're watching videos. You can even get multiple takes of the same thing. If there's a performance that, uh, that you're recording uh, or someone needs to say something or to set something down on a table and you're doing a bit of directing, it's okay to do it more than once and then delete the ones that don't count. But make sure that you got it, right? Uh, you can review it to make sure that it's the best that you are, are able to do as a camera operator and, and the best performance that you recorded from the, the talent as well. When people are watching your content, you want them to say things like, how did you get that shot? They just can't wrap their mind around where you were, or the composition, or the movement, or anything. And, and so to, to do that, you, you really need to stand on your head uh, and, and look at this world that you've been looking at uh, your whole life uh, in a way that you've never looked at before. And, and so this photo that I have on my computer screen right now, it's a, a picture of, of camels, but uh, it's unique in the sense that it, it's a bird's eye view perspective looking straight down and those black uh, silhouettes that we're looking at is actually the shadows of the camels themselves and that the white lines are the, the camel bodies themselves. And th this is such a great shot because it really forces you to think about where the person was or where the camera up was. And then when you finally see it, oh, that's what that is, cool. You want people to think that way about your shots. And good videographers can make the ordinary extraordinary. It, it just all depends on where you set this thing up uh, and what instructions you, you, uh, you give people. I hope this was uh, helpful. And uh, if you have any videos that you would like to, to share um, about some of your successes or things that you're working on, I'd love to see them. Uh, if you wanna send me anything, you can send it to Colin at emptycutmedia.ca. And I wish you all the best with your B-roll.